Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series where we bring you bite-sized ISO videos. In this series, we'll talk about the updates to the ISO 27001 framework issued in the 2022 update. We'll cover all of the Annex A controls, both the new controls as well as the existing ones to make sure that you have everything you need to implement them effectively in your organization. In this video, we'll discuss system and network security controls. These are perhaps the most technological controls that we will talk about. The first is 8.7, protection against malware. The control basically states that you need to protect all of your ecosystem and all of your assets from malware. This is typically through the implementation of antivirus solutions or next-gen AV solutions that can monitor for heuristic behavior or particular processes or actions that may represent malware. Whatever the system is, ensure that you not only have complete coverage, but that that system meets your needs and that you are supplementing anywhere that it does not fully meet your needs. The next control is 8.18, use of privilege utility programs. Now, I, I think this control uh, in the past has been misconstrued a bit. It's been somewhat comically discussed in my opinion. So they've updated the control language on this to actually sp specifically call out what a privilege utility program is. It says the use of utility programs that might be capable of overriding system and application controls should be restricted and tightly controlled. So on a laptop, what this means is administrative privileges. These are the things that could override any type of security controls that an administrator may put on that device or that asset. So the use of privilege utility programs that are running with administrative privileges should be tightly controlled. It's a very lengthy discussion depending on the organization as to what a privilege utility program constitutes or what those may be within your organization, but sit down, have the conversation and document your approach to the use of privilege utility programs. The next control is 8.20, network controls. This control states networks should be managed and controlled to protect information in systems and applications. This is a very generalized control that works with several other controls for full operational effectiveness. This control wants to see that you've articulated your approach to network controls, that you are clearly aware of and understanding of the security controls that need to be in place throughout your network and where those are. This could be a policy, this could be a very informative network diagram, it could be a combination of the two and many other things. Whatever you decide to produce to demonstrate your network controls control is in place, ensure that it is clearly readable and it's understandable by external parties and that it doesn't require an IT systems administrator level of knowledge to understand what you're trying to illustrate as your necessary security controls. That can be very helpful in audit times. It can also be very helpful in simply making changes to it and working with others throughout the business. The next control is 8.21, security of network services. This control says security mechanisms, service levels, and service requirements of network services should be identified, implemented, and monitored. So this control is basically making sure that the organization has a risk management approach to the security of the network services. That you're considering things such as SLAs that may need to be in place for particular systems in use or response times or anything that could affect the security of the network. So make sure that you sit down and you understand that control. This is one that came from the 2013 Annex A control set, so if you've been previously certified, you should be okay here. The next is 8.22, segregation in networks. It says groups of information services, users, and information systems should be segregated in the organization's networks. Now, this is interesting because if you remember, there is also a control around the separation of dev, test, production environments. So you can infer that this is beyond that. This is more than just your infrastructure and your systems used to produce and edit code and show and deliver products and services. This is your entire network. So you may have things such as an Active Directory server that sits in its own particular section of your network that's protected and is only authorized to be accessed by particular individuals. That would be an example of a type of segregation in your network, showing the networking rules in place to keep others who shouldn't be accessing that from getting to that asset. There are many types of situations here that should be considered. It depends on your organization. Work with your networking team and your IT team to understand the segregation in networks in place today and make sure that you as management are okay with that posture and that you don't think there needs to be any updates to it. If there are, make sure you sit down, understand what those updates are, the impacts, and that you implement those. 
The next control is 8.23. This is a new control. This is web filtering. So this control says access to external websites should be managed to reduce exposure to malicious content. The easiest example of implementing this control is making sure that internal servers, internal infrastructure assets, cannot browse the external internet. That's probably the lowest hanging fruit way to implement this control. However, if you read the implementation guidance, it goes beyond that. It also wants to see that web filtering is happening across other assets such as employee laptops. So this may be an enterprise version of a browser that gets rolled out. It may be using an MDM tool to enforce some whitelists or blacklists on uh, web browsing. But whatever it is, make sure that you understand the control, you understand the desire of ISO from the guidance, and that you feel comfortable with your posture around how you're, web, how you're filtering any type of external website traffic. The next control is 8.30, outsource development. It says the organization should direct, monitor, and review the activities related to outsource systems development. This control basically covers all things external developer. So this could be someone who is not a full-time employee, but maybe does some part-time work, or maybe it's full-time work, but they're 1099. Essentially, make sure that if they're an outsource development resource, such as an individual or a team, that they are monitored and checked in accordance with the risk they present. So typically, I would say that any code that's being given to you by someone who is not following your internal full-time employee SDLC should be further scrutinized and inspected for security before it's brought into your actual ecosystem. So make sure that you're comfortable with your posture on outsource development management and that you're managing that to your risk appetite. The last control is 8.34, protection of information systems during audit and testing. Essentially, this control makes, wants to make sure that you are protecting your systems anytime you plan to audit, touch, inspect, work on, those systems. So the control says audit tests and other assurance activities involving assessment of operational systems should be planned and agreed between the tester and appropriate management. Basically, don't do things that are going to interrupt business operations. If you're going to do that through necessity, make sure that the right people are aware of it and simply make sure that you are reducing the overhead and the burden of the organization to accommodate these tests and assurance audits uh, to the extent possible. Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series. If you'd like to learn more about updates to the framework, check out a link in the description below to a white paper we've written. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content like this. Look for us on LinkedIn, and also check out our website at risk360.com to learn more about how Risk360 may be able to help you achieve your security and compliance goals.